This video today is to help you understand how you can troubleshoot access control system issues, uh, specifically, uh, you know, when card readers do not work properly. Okay, so um, this is basically the topic of today's video. We will show you how to troubleshoot the system um, in a very specific order so you can get to the point where everything works as expected. Hello again, my name is Fred Bergeron from Inaccess Security Systems. I've been um, the head of tech support here for Inaccess for a, a long time. I've been in the industry for almost 22 years now. So, um, you know, every day in our tech support department, we have questions uh, or, or clients contacting us with issues where, you know, the card reader is not unlocking the door, it's not reading the card properly, uh, readers are coming online, offline, you know, they're dropping off the network, you know, things like that. And for this reason, um, you know, I really want to make this video uh, an important one. Um, and the goal is to show you how to troubleshoot properly so you save time, you know, on site, so you don't waste time, you know, um, troubleshooting and in the wrong directions and things like that. So there's very specific items that we want to go through. Um, and hopefully at the end of this list, you know, if you're having an issue with the card reader, card formats, uh, you know, reader communication and things like that, then uh, hopefully this is going to help you solve those problems. The first thing is to identify how these readers were installed, if it's an existing site, or how should you install them if it's a new install, right? So typically for us, there's two different types of protocols that we will explain in this video, all right? Some other access control systems of, of the past may have different protocols, but today, um, you know, the most common one for us is basically RS-45 or OSDP, um, but there's also Wigan, which is a technology that is slowly being, you know, phased out by OSDP and RS-45, but it is still probably the most common, you know, way of connecting card readers to the system. So in this example here, I'm showing you the ICT Protege GX system, uh, but this video only, and not only applies to our own system, but also to most of uh, the existing access control systems that are offered on the market. Okay, so the, the way of troubleshooting should be probably the same among, you know, different manufacturers. Uh, again, I'm going to show you how this system works, but this video will be good for uh, anyone uh, installing access control card readers, at, in, you know, today. Um, so, so first of all, if you're connecting the reader with uh, Wigan, um, obviously, the cable that you're going to use will be different. All right? It's not going to be the same cable type. For instance, uh, Wigan requires non-twisted pairs, um, and most manufacturers will recommend to use a, a shielded uh, cable. Okay? And that's the key. You should always read the instructions. You should always follow the manufacturer's recommendations. And uh, what you don't want to happen is a system that's all wired up with the wrong type of cable, and then you're having some communication problems with the card reader. So it's either going to be very slow to respond or it may not work every single time. So you may have to bash the card two, three times, uh, you know, for a door to unlock properly. Okay. So if you install a system as per the manufacturer's recommendations, well, then you're going to get tech support from the manufacturer if you have issues, right? Um, if you use the wrong cable type or if the system is not powered properly, then, you know, they may not want to support you because you didn't follow the instructions uh, with, you know, the devices you're installing. Again, just quickly, uh, and again, you will refer to the install guide for the product you're using, but basically when it's Wigan, uh, you need to use a cable that is not twisted with the overall shield, and typically the shield will be connected um, to a suitable ground at the access control module site. You should not connect the shield at the reader site, all right? So everything will be drained to the cold water pipe or, or you know, the, uh, the building ground. OK, um, if it's RS-45, um, then it's recommended to use a twisted pair for the NANB or the AB um, communication wires um, and then use an extra cable for power. And the size or the gauge of this cable will be calculated based on the distance to be traveled. All right. Um, some use, you know, 18-2 or 16-2 uh, cables uh, for power. OK, um, <clears throat> so in other words, Always confirm the manufacturer specs, install as per the manufacturer recommendations, and then you're in a very good position to have a perfectly working system, okay? So what if the reader is not functioning properly? What if the reader is not even responding to a card? You know, so that's the next step. Um, is there enough power at the reader, all right? Most readers will require 12 volts, okay? 
If you're installing, um, let's say, biometric readers or if you're installing um, long-range readers, sometimes they will require you to use a separate power source because the reader expander or the reader module that you're using doesn't have enough auxiliary power to feed these devices. So if you use external power uh, to power a reader or a long-range reader or a biometric reader device, um, you know, basically you have to have a common ground between this device's power supply and the ground of the reader expander. Okay, so Wigan in this case will require that you connect the, you know, the D0 and D1 in the ground at least, plus um, the LED if there is any LED feedback and the buzzer if there is buzzer feedback for the device you have connected. Okay, uh, but most of the time, uh, you know, we're going to use simple card readers like this one, like these, uh, and they, they basically don't um, need to have separate power. So it's recommended to power the readers from the reader expander itself. Okay, so again, make sure you have 12 volts or more at the reader when you're testing with your meter just to make sure there's enough power to feed, you know, the reader so that it reads cards properly at a good range. Okay, so that's the first step. Make sure there's enough power. And again, like I said before, good recommended cable for the type of protocol you're using for the reader. In this case, you're using the ICT45 format, which is uh, similar to OSDP. Okay, then the next step. You know, what's happening when you present a card to the reader, okay? So, a valid card, you know, or, or, or an invalid card in this case, you know, will basically generate a first beep, which is the card read beep. Uh, most reader manufacturers will have that. So, when you present the card, the first beep just means that there's enough power on the reader. And then any subsequent beeps will confirm if it's an access granted or an access denied, all right? So, if you're just getting a short beep, but there's no other uh, beeper activation from the access control system, uh, to me, typically that means that the reader is offline or is not communicating properly. Um, in Wigand, the reader will send the data to the reader expander, but there's no two-way communication. So you just know that it worked when the door unlocks, when the reader is giving you a long beep or a rejection beep. Okay? In RS-45, um, it's a bit easier to troubleshoot reader communication. Most manufacturers will have the reader um, you know, blink if it's offline, like the one here, all right, in this example. I have enabled RS-45 on this one, but I left this port, you know, um, deliberately I left this port on Wigan. And you can see the reader is programmed for RS-45, but the port is not. So it's flashing, meaning it's offline. So if I badge a card on it, I'm just getting a, a, a one beep, meaning that the reader is accepting the card, but there is no communication between the two, all right? So obviously you need to make sure that the reader is wired properly. If it's Wigan, you need, um, you know, publicity power. You need D0, D1, which is typically, um, you know, the green and white wires that we have here, so, okay? And, and then you need the LED wires and buzzer, okay? But that won't affect communication, but obviously you want feedback from the access control system, okay? If it's RS-45, sorry, it's basically four wires. You have power and you have the A and B wires uh, for the RS-45 communication. And this is uh, a lot better for troubleshooting because you have two-way communication between the two. So it's, it's very easy to know. The reader will know uh, that it's not connected to a port, so you know it's offline, okay? With Wigan, you know it's not working basically when you badge a card, you know, that's the idea. If basically you have, like this one, you have some feedback from the access control system, then it's probably just a configuration problem, okay? so. The card is badged, the data is received by the access control system, and it's refusing access. Uh, it could be, you know, um, let's say a schedule that's invalid for the access level for this door or for that user. Um, it could be that the um, user doesn't have access to the door at all, uh, you know, but basically when this is happening, uh, I'm going to show you later, but basically you need to refer to the event logs of the access control system to review the events in a sequence that you will then be able to understand why it's not working and then you can fix it. You add the door to the access level, for instance, or you make the schedule valid, you know. So basically when you present the card, if it's giving you a feedback, that's good news. It, it doesn't matter if it's denied, it means that the access control system is receiving the data properly and it's telling you, know, you that it's invalid or it's denied access. If it's a short beep, that's a communication problem. So if it's Wigan, make sure that everything is wired properly. Um, and if you confirm the, at the door that the reader is wired properly, at least on that side of the cable, um, you know, it may be good to take a reader or the same reader and connect it directly to the reader expander, okay? So you plug the reader directly at the board and you reproduce the problem. If it works, 
then you know that maybe there's a power drop or maybe there's a wire that's wired invert some way, maybe there's some splicing in the cable, but basically if the reader works at the module, you know the reader is good, you know the port is good, the next step is to troubleshoot the cabling, okay? If it doesn't work at the board, then you may have a faulty reader or maybe there's a programming issue with, uh, you know, the format. And so you can try to swap to the other port, see if it works, to isolate the issue, whether if it's with the reader, with the port, um, you know, or with programming, okay? So, for instance, most um, access control systems will have an LED here um, or somewhere on the board, under the PC board, whatever, uh, an, an LED that will show if there is a card being presented at one of the reader ports. So you see, it's like a little Wi-Fi antenna. So, you know, in this system with GX, um, basically when it turns on about, you know, three quarter of a second, that's a valid card format. So everything is programmed properly. The rest is just programming with access levels and the user, okay? Typically, if it's a quick blink, um, it's one of two things. There's corruption or the signal is not received properly, especially when it's weakened, um, or there's an invalid format being programmed. And that's the key. Every system, every card or reader manufacturer may or will have a different output format. Okay, so with ICT, the preferred format is HID 2634. Um, and then uh, with other systems, maybe it's some 37-bit format, you know, so you need to know how to program the reader ports to accept the card format received from the reader, okay? So that's the key. So for us, with ICT, when there's a quick blink, we know that probably there's a wiring issue or the format being programmed under that reader port is wrong, okay? So, but for us, this, you know, like one second on off um, type of blinking is good, meaning that the reader port is programmed with the correct format, okay? Or at least the system is recognizing this card as being valid uh, in the system based on the programming, okay? So again, looking at the, the received data light is a good idea. Uh, you know, maybe, you know, you need a, someone to help you on site, one at the card reader, one at the board. So the guy badges, you see what's going on, and then it's gonna help you with the troubleshooting, okay? so. Now, what I want to show you is, let's say you have fixed any kind of reader issues or wiring issues, and now you're still getting an access denied, but at least you know you have feedback from the reader, or sorry, the reader expander. So now we're gonna basically have a look at the system. Um, I'm gonna show the Protege GX system, but no matter which system you're using, uh, you know, you simply go to the page where all events are showing, and then when the system is reading a card, you're gonna see why it's being rejected at the door, okay? So let's have a look at the events on my Prodigy GX software. Now let's have a look at um, primarily two scenarios. The first one being, I'm reading the card on the reader, it's just giving me a short beep, but it's not showing any events in the system, all right? So this is an example, right? I only have one beep on all my cards, even though I know some of them are programmed in the system, right? So in this example, um, Let's say we checked all the wiring, everything is good, power is good, there's nothing wrong with the cabling. I can see my reader is flashing and it's offline, okay? Um, again, I'm showing Protege GX from ICT. Uh, other access control systems will, um, you know, obviously have a different look and different ways of labeling things. But basically, in this example, I'm going to the, um, from the homepage, I'm going to expanders and then reader expanders. And you can see here, the first reader, I'm getting a long beep, meaning it's online. So I know because it's programmed as ICT 485. So I'm gonna do this with the second reader, all right, and I'm gonna save this. I just have to give my system a bit of time to download the changes to the module, okay? And then for Prodigy GX, there's one extra step when the download is completed that need to do a module update. So you restart the module to apply the changes, okay? But again, this may vary on you know other systems, with GX, I can see if the download is completed by um, looking at the, uh, the time here. So the download should be, should be fine now. So I'm just gonna restart the module and then we should see this um, stop flashing. It takes about 20 seconds to update. Perfect, so you see, it's now blue, solid blue, meaning it's online. If I badge a card again, I get the long beep, okay? So that was the first scenario. You need to fix programming. If everything is good with wiring, you just make sure that the reader port is programmed properly, 
Okay, so in this example, I'm using ICT, MyFair, and these fire cards, and these are 34 bit. Okay, so I can show you here. This is how the report it needs to be programmed, and it's how it is by default because all of our cards are either 26 or 34 bit, unless it's a special order. So basically, now under the monitoring page, I want to look at my all events page, and it's going to show me why. You know, I'm getting a long beep. In this case, um, this event means it's a it's an unknown card. It doesn't exist in the system. Okay. If I use this user, right now I see the name of the person. Okay, and the reason why it's denying access to the door. So basically, I see that the server room is not allowed to join. Uh, so in other words, the access level or the access rights assigned to John do not allow access to this door. So it's probably normal. If it's not, then you simply edit the access level or give John a new access level, you know, but it doesn't matter. But basically, you need to remember this forever. The event log of the access control system is your friend. You need to learn how to read those events in a proper sequence, and then it's going to help you troubleshooting, okay? If I use my other card, you know, which is a master user, uh, you know, when it's a big boss of the company, all right, so he has access to the server room. Okay, if I take the card from John and go to the front door, it's access granted. Okay, so in other words, um, make sure that the hardware, the cabling is all good, and then you can start troubleshooting in terms of programming. All right, but you need events. If the events are not showing up in the system, there's something wrong between you know, the card reader and the access control module, or maybe between the card and the reader. Uh, a lot of clients are calling us saying, oh, um, my card doesn't wake up the reader. It doesn't beep, doesn't give me the first uh, card read beep. Uh, you know, and most of the time what it is, is they purchase, let's say, this fire readers from us, but they, by mistake, you know, they purchase, um, in, let's say, um, uh, 125 kilohertz cards, which are not compatible with the disk fire readers. So, Make sure you, you order the, the cards that will work well with the readers you have, you're installing on site, so that's the key. Um, and then if it doesn't work still, the reader beeps, but it's not communicating, then you have to look at power, cable, you know, and, and everything uh, that is in between the reader and the access control module. And then you can start, you know, troubleshooting in terms of um, software. But you need to get some events from the card readers and the reader modules. I hope this helped you. Um, uh, you know, it's, it's um, very important to us to uh, make sure that you guys know how to troubleshoot access control systems. Uh, you know, we want to help you. Obviously, uh, if you go through the whole list and you're still having issues and using our systems, uh, we have a full team of tech support uh, staff to help you. Okay, uh, we connect remotely. We help you program systems when it's a new uh, when you're new to the system. Uh, so don't hesitate to call us. All right. So again. My name is Fred Bergeron from Inaxis. I hope you liked the video. Uh, please subscribe to our channel, register to notifications. If you have any questions, suggestions regarding this topic or any topics, please send them below. I will be more than happy to answer you. All right, thank you.